What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp rendering tutorial for you. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about the types of interior lighting that you can use to create your renders. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So um, as always, we're going to be using Twilight Renders free hobby version, but the principles that we're going to use today uh, definitely apply to other rendering softwares as well. Um, the only thing that's really going to be different is going to be more uh, the the differences in controls and finding where everything is in other softwares, but generally they're all going to work kind of the same way. Um, if you're looking to download the hobby version of Twilight Render, you can go to www.twilightrender.com and download the hobby version. Um, that's going to be the free version that you can use in order to do all this stuff. All right, so basically all I've done is I've created a box. So I just modeled a box in SketchUp. And then uh, I came in here and I created kind of a scene on the interior. So if I come to the outside here and I hide this exterior wall, you can see that I'm inside this shape with my camera view. And uh, probably the best thing for you to do is once you get everything kind of modeled in here, you can go ahead and... Uh, kind of get your camera view or your camera where you want it to be probably using the uh, the position camera option get everything kind of looking the way you want then you can come in here and kind of unhide that back wall just like this so now when I unhit everything that wall is closed and then you're just gonna want to come in here and you're gonna go to view animation and add scene and basically all you're doing is you're just saving your camera viewpoint so that makes it a lot easier for you to get in here and edit stuff um, that way if you ever get lost outside your box or whatever just like this you can just click on your scene and just go back to it just like that and one thing that is a little bit important to know is you can come up here and click edit select none so if you accidentally click on one of these walls you can't really click off of anything you can hit control T or you can go to edit select none so that you don't have anything selected anymore um, so anyway what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start with this simple space and all I've got in here is I've got kind of a TV shape on the wall I've got a couple different chairs in here and I've got a light fixture so nothing too complicated and uh, first thing we're gonna do um, oh and one, one other note when you're doing this you've got your interior like this um, you can adjust your field of view by using the zoom tool and then you can see where it says shift to change field of view if you hold the shift button and click and drag it's going to affect how much um, of your space you can see with your camera um, and you don't want it to be all the way back like this because it's really going to distort everything but if you pick something in here where you can kind of see your scene that'll get saved as a part of your scenes up here when you add the scene so make sure you adjust that field of view in here so that you can see the stuff that you're working on all right so what we're going to start off doing is we're going to start off by just adding a light in um, twilight render and so the way that you're going to do that is you can either go to the extensions and uh, the twilight render menu up here or you can just use the or you can just use the create light option up here in the actual twilight render toolbar so i'm going to go ahead and use this create light option and you can see how as soon as i click on create light what that's going to do is that's basically going to pop up this box in here where you can actually come in here and you can edit your light all right so when you do that when you click on that edit light button um, option it'll click up this box but there's nothing in here yet you can also see how um, your cursor turns into like this pointing finger and you've got this little point on here and basically you're just gonna set a new light and the way that you're gonna do that is you're gonna have to click three times uh, the first time is you're gonna select kind of a reference point so just a point it's not where your light goes but it gives you a point to kind of inference off of um, so you're gonna set a general reference point you're gonna click again to set the location of your light so I want my light to be a little bit below the ceiling here and then finally you're gonna click somewhere to con to set the target of the light or what your lights gonna point at so in this case I'm just gonna click right here and you can see when I do that what that does is that pops up all this different stuff in the edit light options of Twilight render so now you can come in here and you can actually edit all this stuff and uh, so we'll just kind of run through some of this stuff uh, real quick so there's basically three different kinds of light that I want to talk about right now. Um, there are a couple more, but for right now, we're just going to talk about these three basic kinds. So the first is a point light. And a point light is basically a light that doesn't have any direction. So it shoots out light um, the same in every different direction. So it's basically just a point that light comes off of. So if you were to place this right in the middle of your model, it would point, it would emanate light equally in all directions. So that's going to be your first kind of light. Um, your second kind of light, you're going to come over to this type, and you can pick spotlight. And you can see how your... Uh, 
preview here changes um, because this is a different kind of light. So basically a spotlight is a light that just shines on a certain point. So you can see how when this is a point light, it's got this single point of light up here that's emanating light out. If you've got a spotlight, instead of having that single point of light, basically it's shining the light down on your object just like this. Um, so let me run you through a quick um, render of that just so you can see what the differences are. So if I just run a quick render in here and I set this to preliminary and we'll set this to kind of small um, 800 by 600 just so you can kind of see real quick. Um, so if you just come in here, you click the play button to render this light. So this is going to be your spotlight. You can see how there's like this circle of light here on the ground, right? If I close that and I change this to a point light and then run that render again, what you're gonna find is, is the light's gonna be different in this model. So you can see now you've got this point right here that the light is emanating off of and it's kind of shining on all your different faces in here. So this is kind of like if you had like a recessed can light or something like that. And uh, the other ones are if you actually want your light to point at things. So, and one thing to note about a spotlight. So if you have this light set to a spotlight, you can right click on it or you can, sorry, you can single click on it and then right click on it, go down to twilight render and select set light target. And basically you can just click wherever you want that to shine. So if you want that to shine on your wall over here, you can click there. Um, if you want it to shine on your floor, you can basically click wherever you want that to go. So now if I run a quick version of that render, you're gonna find that your spotlight's gonna be more on the wall over there than it's gonna be on the floor. So you can see it's gonna render that right in here. So, and you can see what that does is that kind of shines, cause I set this as a translucent material and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but you can see how it's kind of shining through that and it's casting a, a colored shadow on the wall. So anyway, those are the first two kinds of lights that I wanna talk about. And the third, I just wanna talk about really fast. The third kind of light I wanna talk about is an emitter. And so basically what an emitter is, is it's actually a material in your SketchUp model that emits light. And to adjust that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna use your material editor and you can select that object and then you can come in here to your templates and you can select emitter and you can set what kind of emitter you want this to be. So you can basically set this so the blue color in your model is gonna emit blue light. And you can adjust the power in here. Um, you can adjust a couple different things, but you can use this to emit color. So now if I come in here and I run a quick render, um, I don't know how good it's gonna look on preliminary, but we'll give it a shot. All right, so if I run a quick render in here, you can see that it's kind of this blue color. Um, and you can see how this is brighter because that's actually emitting light and it's casting shadows. And so what we're gonna do, because this isn't a very bright rendering, and this is an important tip when you're moving forward is we're gonna use the post process section in here to make this brighter. So like for example, if I come in here and I set the exposure on this to like six or something like that, I can turn the gamma back down because it's a little heavy. Maybe set it to one, maybe put my exposure to five, but you can see what this does is it basically fills your entire room with like a blue light. And we'll use this more in the future. I just wanted to give you a general idea that this exists. So you can use materials as light emitters as well. So those are the three kind of lights that I wanna talk about in this tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this shape back out of here. So the, now let's talk just a little bit about your different options in here. So let's go ahead and we'll put a point light back in here, about right here. So basically what you've got in here is you've got a bunch of settings where you can actually adjust the way that these lights work. So like for example, you've got this size option in here where you can make that bigger. So if you wanted it to be like a four inch light, you can see how this got bigger when I did that. Um, so you can make your lights bigger and smaller. Um, you don't need to worry too much about attenuation right now. So power is gonna be something that's gonna be important because really what you wanna do is you wanna use realistic levels of light. Um, in your models when you're doing stuff like this. And so what you can do is if you think about like light bulbs, right? You can buy like a 40 watt or a 60 watt or different wattages that affect the brightness, a um, hundred watt. You can buy all those different things. And so when you come in here and you set that, you can see in your preview scene, what that's gonna do is that's gonna adjust your light 
based on what you set that at. So you can use this preview down here to kind of see what that's going to do. Um, but you can actually come in here and you can set those um, either in lumens or watts. Uh, usually I use watts um, just because that's what I'm familiar with. But you can set that so, so those are actually realistic lights. Next thing you're going to talk about a little bit is you can come in here and let's say you wanted this to be an LED light as opposed to like an incandescent light or whatever. Um, you can come in here and you can select these different options to have different kinds of light in here. Um, so that's that's going to be important um, because each one of these looks a little bit different, obviously. So you can come in here and you can just kind of set the way that that's going to work. And then another thing you can do is you can come in here and you can set these to different colors. So like let's say for example that I wanted this to be more of kind of a blue light. I wanted to cast kind of a blue color. What you could do is you could come in here and you could just adjust this color to affect the way that things are going to look in here. So that's going to get a little bit darker. So you can use that to create different effects. But one of the things that's really going to be important when you do this is you can actually come in here and you can pull up like a light chart um, by Googling like light temperature chart or something like that. Like if you know if you go by if you go by light bulbs at like a home improvement store or something like that they have different light right they have the cool light they've got the warm light different things like that well you can find a chart of those and then you can come in here and you can pick that value like 3500 is kind of a warm light that you find in bulbs a lot of the time so you can type in that light temperature and click this convert button and it'll automatically come in here and it'll select that color of light for you so you can see how this is more of a yellow light in here. So now if I come in here and I run this render, it's going to look different than it did before. I may have to turn my post processing back down. We'll put it back to one for now. But you can see how this has more of a warm light as opposed to what we had in there before, which had a much lower color temperature. So you can come in here and you can adjust this in different ways in order to get different looks and stuff like that. Um, but a general rule of thumb is just imagine you were buying bulbs at the home improvement store and think about which ones you'd want in your space and what those would do um, because that's going to be something that's going to be really important when you're working in, in uh, your rendering software. So other thing I want to talk about is you can come down here and this is your preview scene and it's the same as everything else in Twilight Render. If it's a green check, what that means is it's going to come in here and it's going to render the this scene um, it's gonna give you a preview of what this lights gonna do but if you come in here you can adjust your different scenes in here so this would show you more like what this light would look like if it was an exterior light um, so if it was like a parking lot light or it'll put it in here like if this was a um, like if this was like a desk lamp or something like that so obviously a desk lamp bulb is gonna have lower wattage than a big room light so you can uh, use this for smaller objects and then there's also kind of a wall sconce option so basically it'll show you if this was a wall point light what that would do to your model in here so you can use that to look at your different options in here so that's kind of a basic run through of the way this works um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna walk you through a couple different renderings uh, we'll try a couple different things in here um, and you can see what they do and basically the key in this is for you to just kind of figure out the way this stuff works and then apply it to what you're trying to do so like for example I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna come in here and you can adjust and move lights in here just like you can any other geometry in SketchUp so you can come in here and you can move them um, I think you can scale them as well you can make them bigger smaller whatever um, you can hide them you can do all those different things in here you can also select them just like any other geometry and delete them so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a couple new lights in here just so we can see kind of what the effect is so we're gonna start off and we're gonna set a point light right here in your ceiling we're gonna go ahead and move that point light down just a little bit so it's not actually in the ceiling but what we're gonna do in here now I've got my other view is we're just gonna create a couple copies of this so like if I move this over here you use the move tool in copy mode just like you would a normal piece of geometry so now I've got four different lights in here so let's go ahead and run run our first render so if I run this render on preliminary what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me um, a really fast render of the way this lights gonna interact and all that other stuff and um, again if you ever want to adjust the brightness of your model um, don't adjust the 
brightness of your lights in here, keep those realistic. And then you can use these settings over here to adjust the way that this looks um, so that you can get the brightness that you want. So you can turn these different things down to adjust that. I could turn this up to make it really bright. So change your exposure and your gamma and stuff like that to change your brightness. Don't change your lights. So use this post-process piece um, in here to adjust your brightness. But you can see what this does is that gives you your four point lights right here along your room and you can see how those cast shadows with your furniture right here. So like let's say I come in here and I adjust my scene real quick. So that adjusted my scene so I've got my other view and we'll just run another view or another render. But you can see what that's going to do is that's going to shine lights in your room just like this and you can see how it's dimmer under here so this is actually like simulating the way the lights are affected or the way the lights are being treated in your model so this is one one kind of render you could do is you could come in here and you could use a couple point lights so now let's go in here and instead of doing that we'll go ahead and delete those back out what we'll do is we'll add a pair of spotlights so we'll add a light right here we'll make the target the ground just like this and then come in here and just select spot instead of point and I'm gonna go back to my office view just like this and you can see that you can affect a few of the other things in here like the way the light falls off as it moves um, you can adjust the different size stuff like that but we're gonna create one of these and then we're gonna make a copy and we're gonna move that across just like this as well and then we're going to run our render again and take and take a look at what that does for us. So we'll come in here, we'll click this play button and make sure you're setting this stuff on preliminary when you first start off. Uh, just so you can create kind of a fast render in here. But you can see what this does is instead of instead of having your point lights on the ceiling right now instead it's got your lights on the ground so it's shining your light down here and your light kind of emits from what you've got on the ground right here and you can do the same thing you can adjust you can adjust your exposure and your different pieces to kind of brighten it up and all of that but you can see how the light acts differently based off of this and uh, remember that the way twilight render works is once you start applying materials and everything else then those are going to interact in a certain way as well like if you made this tv screen glossy um, then light would shine off of that and you could actually put an image on this tv screen and set it to be an, an emitter so you could actually light the room with this tv screen if you wanted to this this is kind of a general overview of the way the point lights and the spotlights work but another thing you could do is you could actually come over to this lamp and you kind of have to adjust your camera a little bit so you can get up in there. But what you could do is you could add a light right here in the middle of your lamp. So just triple click in here and just add a point light just like this. So now what you've got is you've got a light in here like you would if, um, if you actually had a light bulb in here on this lamp. So your light is actually gonna emit from inside this lamp just like this. And then what you're gonna wanna do is you can see how you've got this kind of gold color on the outside of your lamp just like this so if i come in here and i select that in sketchup you've got this color d04 well, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come into the material editor of twilight render and you're going to want to select that material so you're going to turn the materials editor on you're going to click the little eyedropper and then you can click on this material to select it and then what you're going to do is you're going to come down here and you're going to apply a uh, a translucent curtain effect to it so what you're gonna do is you're gonna come down here you're gonna find the translucent material option and you're gonna select standard curtain and basically what you're telling it is treat this gold material like kind of a thick translucent curtain and so what you're gonna get is you're gonna get your light shining through this but then it's gonna be affected right here by this actual material so it's gonna kind of uh, it's gonna kind of affect the way that you're color looks and then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to use our light editor to change our light color so like for example let's say that we came in here we've got this light selected but let's say we went out and we bought a 100 watt light bulb but then we wanted to adjust the color to kind of a warm light bulb so like a warm light bulb for, for example is going to be about 3500 so if you type in 3500 in here and click this convert button you can see what that did is that adjusted the color of the bulb in here so now if I click off of this, this is going to adjust the way that this looks. You can see how it's more of a warm color in here. 
So now if I come back, I reset my scene, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of these, and then I'm gonna run my render just like this, and we'll run it on preliminary because it usually takes longer with translucent materials and everything else, but if we run it on preliminary, just like this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna give us a view of our room as if we had this light bulb in here as like a real bulb. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn the exposure up probably to probably to three. And you can change your gamma as well. So you, you don't wanna make it too bright, um, but you do wanna make it kinda of look realistic. Um, and you can see what this did, cause it came in here and it did a preliminary render, is there's a whole lot of dots in here. And what that means is it kinda of shot the lights out, but it only shot so many. And so it didn't quite see enough of these to make this a smooth option. So we're gonna go ahead and run this on, we'll put it on low plus for right now. And you can see how down here it tells you what it's doing, it's ray tracing and everything else. And this is gonna take a little bit longer, but you can see the quality of your image is gonna be better. Um, so we can see a lot better what the shadows look like and everything else. So you can see what you've got here is you've got kind of a more realistic image um, with an actual like light bulb brightness in here you've got this actual material in here that's kind of affecting the way that this looks and you can see how this material and this light aren't the same color and so what that means is this is adjusting the temperature of the light as it goes through it just like this but you can see how that's casting shadows and everything else so it gives you kind of a cool more realistic look just like this so the final thing i'm going to do is I'm just gonna change to my other scene. Um, I like my other view better. You can come in here and set this to more of a glossy material if you want. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and skip over that for right now. But so then I'm gonna open up the render option here and this is gonna pop up. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this to a bigger view. I wanna create a bigger image. So probably we'll set this to 14. We'll set this to 1440, and then uh, as long as this uh, aspect ratio is locked, it'll automatically adjust this so you maintain your aspect ratio. And then I'm also gonna come in here, I'm gonna set this to medium plus. So that's gonna be a higher quality render. And then I'm just gonna let it run for a little while and see what it comes up with. I already ran my preliminary render to kind of see what everything looks. So I tested it before I did my longer render. So now I'm just gonna hit the play button and see what it spits out. And by the way, I keep skipping over this render the current selection only. Um, it does ask if you, if you want to render what you have selected. And I keep clicking no because I want to render everything. You can also just deselect everything before you run your render. So we'll just let this run for a minute. All right, so that's kind of our final render and the way that everything looks. So uh, that's kind of where I'm gonna wrap this video up. Uh, what you what you would do from here if you were gonna continue making this more of a rendering is, or more of a realistic rendering, is you'd probably come in here and you'd start applying materials. You'd make these couches look a little bit more realistic, um, stuff like that to kind of make the light look right. So you kind of take a look at what you like, what you don't like, and then uh, you kind of go from there. So we'll get into that a little further in the future, but I just wanted to give you a quick run through of the way all the lighting works or at least some of the lighting works in uh, rendering. So anyway, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you like this? Did I go too fast for you in any of the sections? Was there something else you would have liked to have seen? I just love having that sketch up conversation with you guys. So uh, make sure you leave that comment. Uh, if you like this video, remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new sketch up content every week. If you really like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Um, every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month, that just helps me keep bringing you great sketch up content. But in any case, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.